welcome to another sermon from the Lewis Church of Christ. And now, here's Adam. Would you pray with me? God, it's so good to be here together as family. So good to be here with, with, with guests that are here today that are just seeking your face. God, I pray that you would speak so powerfully and boldly today. I pray that you might increase and you would help me to decrease, that we might hear you, God. And that I would just get out of the way, and because and, I know that you have something to say to each one of us today. We're drawing close to you today, God. We praise you. Speak, for your servants are all listening this morning. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. What you do this week matters. We're starting a brand new sermon series for the month of July today called Playing for Keeps. You've probably heard the phrase before. You may not know where it comes from. It actually comes from the game of marbles. Uh, the game of marbles, you know, the, all of your friends get together, you bring your own marbles to the table and you play the game and then you get your marbles back and you go home unless at the beginning of the game you let everybody know today we're playing for keeps. Which means the winner of the game, he or she gets to take home all the marbles that they win. If that's the case, then every shot you make matters more, doesn't it? Every shot you make has higher stakes. Everything that you do strategically in the game to win the most marbles, everything matters more when you're playing for keeps. And I want to suggest this month that playing for keeps is the approach that we ought to take in being parents. When we invest in the next generation. Now I know not all of you are parents, but guess what? You all have influence over children, over teenagers, over the next generation whether it be here or where you live or in your extended family, many of you have influence over my children, so don't, act, don't think you can just check out because you're not parents. You better be paying attention because my kids are here and I need you investing in my children. But when we realize that we're playing for keeps when it comes to the next generation, well, every moment we have matters more, right? Everything we do has higher stakes. Every effort we make, we do with greater intentionality and greater conviction. There's this verse in the Old Testament that kind of motivates all of this. It's in the Old Testament book of Judges. Judges chapter 2 verse 10 is this incredible motivator, at least for me, when it comes to the way we interact and invest in the next generation of God followers in the church and outside the church. Judges 2.10 says this, after the whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. 2014 translation, when all the adults of this generation died, the next generation grew up and had no idea who God was and had no idea the things that he had done. If that's not motivation, I don't know what is. I don't want that to ever be true of the next generation of people that I know. And my assumption is, you would never want that to be true either. That none of the kids, none of the next generation have any idea who God is and what he's done. You know, I think we have an obligation to make a difference in the lives of the next generation. The truth is, you're here because an adult decided to be present and invest in your life. Right? At some point, somebody taught me how to read. Somebody taught me how to throw a curveball. He's sitting over there. Still got a wicked curveball. Can't throw a knuckleball to save my life, though. I detest those things. Somebody taught me how to ride a bike. Somebody taught me about the, the, the importance of writing handwritten notes to people. Somebody taught me that to treat others the way I want to be treated. And you have these people, too. And I think just we ought to pay that forward. We ought to also invest in other people, especially the next generation. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And for the kingdom of heaven to remain strong and, and to be world-changing, we need to take seriously our roles in the lives of young people. And so this series is all about playing for keeps. Now, the approach fits in any influencing relationship you might have, of course. But I want us to focus on our investing in the future of our church. And this morning, I want to begin with making the most of our time. Last month, our daughter turned eight, Lydia, the month before that, Gideon turned six, which may not mean a whole lot to you, but I promise you they were just born yesterday. You know what I'm talking about, right? Somehow in like five minutes they learned how to walk and talk and ride a bike and, and do karate and hit a baseball and, and do a tripod. You can do tripods, right? You know what that is. If you don't know what it is, ask Lydia. She'll do one for you. She learned that this week. It's pretty fun. 
uh, Anna, our youngest, is going to be four in just a couple of months, and it's really starting to register with me what all of you tend to say when you see us together and what people always say to people with kids. Enjoy it now, right? Enjoy it while they're young because they grow up so fast. And I always say, well, time is time. It doesn't change. But you know what we're saying, right? Time goes by so fast, and then they say, just before you know it, they're going to be driving, and they're going to be getting married and having kids. And I've never prayed so hard for the return of Jesus that, I, that when you say that to me, I, I don't want to go through that. But you've had these moments, right? When you don't see someone for a while, look how big they're getting. Look what they can do. It's been... It's only been a short time and they're getting so big. And the fact is, every one of us gets the same amount of time. But time is a tricky thing. We never seem to have enough of it, right? Time is one of those things that kind of can get away from us, and especially in our fast-paced lives. Uh, so often we're fighting against the clock. We stay up as late as possible so we can catch up on all the shows, and then we sleep as long as possible until the alarm goes off just so we can get up and rush out the door to, to, to work or to school while we're eating breakfast in the car and we wait to the first stoplight so we can put on makeup or shave and, and all the while we're on the phone and checking up on Facebook just so we can get where we're going just in the nick of time. Time is this crazy thing. And as I study the life of Jesus, you know what I realize? He was never in a rush. Jesus was never in a rush. Even though he had the most important job in history, he did save a whole world, right? And, and even though he knew he only had a short window of time to do it, he was never in a rush. He always had time to, to check out the flowers and to consider the birds of the air and to, to put his hands and bless the little children. He was never in a rush. Time was his friend, and I want to suggest that time can be our friend too if we allow it, if we pay attention if we're wise about things, I think if we, if we allow it, time can be our friend and can empower you and I to end the, end the day leaving with all the winnings. Think about God for a moment, the all-sustaining, all-creating, all-powerful, all-knowing God. A lot of times used time to do things. Think about creation. You think God couldn't have created everything in like five minutes? Sure he could have. But he took six days and then a day off to do it. He let the Israelites stay in captivity for 400 years before sending Moses to deliver them. And then they wandered the desert for decades before ever entering to the land he promised. He could have given Abraham and Sarah a baby immediately, but instead he waited until Abraham was 100 years old to do that. I still question why he didn't send Jesus back the moment Eve took a bite. She ruined everything. You read Genesis, he's part of it too, but his name's Adam, so come on. <laughs> Something. But he could have sent Jesus back in that moment and dealt with the sin issue immediately, couldn't he? But the Bible says that Jesus didn't come till the set time had fully come. Almost as if God has been saying, there are some things we can't really grasp. There are some things you just can't understand unless you get them and learn them over time. Some things can only be understood over time. Some things can only be accomplished over time. Think about writing a book. It doesn't happen overnight. Learning to play an instrument like the violin. Growing a Duck Dynasty beard. It takes time. It takes time. Raising a child up is the same way. It takes time. I think God designed time as a platform that we would create a history worth repeating. God created time as this platform to teach us and to show us some of the most vital truths. Faithfulness, love, forgiveness. We don't understand these things just because they happened once. You don't understand that you, you're loved because someone loved you one time. You don't understand that God is faithful no matter what because he said it once. It's because it's happened over and over and over. You can see the proof of it in your life, right? It only happens over time. And I want to share with you our memory verse for this month. Our memory verse is a great prayer for us to pray every day, and it really kind of sets the tone for the whole, the whole series. If you're not familiar, we have a, a card every month with our memory verse on it. 
And as a church, we want to memorize. We want to be writing the Word of God on our hearts. And this month is a great one. Make sure you get a card on the way out to write this on your heart. It's a really, it's a prayer that Moses wrote, one of the greatest God followers ever. He wrote this prayer in, in, in Psalm chapter 90, verse 12, and it simply says, teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. God, teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. I love this prayer. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to pay attention to the days that we have been given. Help us be understand that our time is limited, right? We don't know how many days we have left. We don't know how many days anyone has. And so help us, teach us to number our days that we can pay, acknowledge the value of every moment and every day and make the most of it, that we might gain a heart of wisdom. That in doing so, in, in numbering our days, in paying attention, we might be able to live each day, each week, each month with being intentional and allowing us to live wisely and making the most and, and living, using our time for what really matters. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff we do that in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter at all, right? And I think God would say, hey, let's major in the majors. Let's not major in the minors and the little things that don't really have any eternal value. So we play for keeps. We play for keeps with the time we have with our children, with the children around us. We make the most of every opportunity, whether it be your kids or your grandkids or your nieces and nephews or your neighborhood's kids or the kids you coach or your friend's kids or, or, or the kids you lead in a small group. We all can invest in the lives. We have an obligation to invest in the lives of the next generation and you know what wise investing takes time it takes time over time you don't have to make the most of every day with kids in fact I don't think you can I think it's impossible and if you tried I think you'd drive yourself and everybody around you pretty nuts but I think you can make the most of every week every week matters by showing up in the world by being consistent and being present, you're creating a history with them. You're, you're making memories that will, that will help shape the, the foundation of their future. You're making small investments consistently over time. And just like, that's how it works. They build on each other. Time has this cumulative effect. So what you do this week matters because it's connected to next week, which is connected to next week, which is connected to the next week. And if our Heavenly Father thought it wise to use time to to teach and to clarify and to solidify things and values in our hearts, maybe the most significant gifts we can give the next generation is by investing these values over time in their hearts. And that means what you do, every one of you, what you do this week matters in the life of the next generation, in the life of kids, of teenagers. Over time, you have an opportunity to, to leave a, a, an imprint, a permanent imprint on the souls of children. And I think as the body of Christ, it's an obligation. I think as parents, it, I know it's your job to do that. But you don't do it alone. We do it together. And that's fun. And that's the approach, making every week matter, numbering our days, playing for keeps. I, want to, I just want to leave you with four ideas uh, that, that might help you number your days with kids in the days to come. The first one is, is I just call it, just count it down. Count it down. Ha have, have some kind of visual way to see time. There's something powerful about putting a visual number to the time you have left. There's something real, a real advantage about numbering your days. Visualizing time allows you to narrow your focus and to really pay attention to what matters most. It might actually help you pace yourself, right? Think about all of life. Think about a basketball team. As the, the closer and closer that clock gets to zero, something changes with those teams, doesn't it? Their focus becomes more intense. Their intensity raises. Their passion raises up. There's something powerful about seeing the time. We don't watch a clock to see what time it is. We watch a clock to see how much time we have left. It just makes sense. When you see how much time you have left, what matters most, tends to matter more, right? And so these, you probably notice these three jars up here. Uh, these three jars, you can find them in our home any other day than today. Uh, and these jars, these jars started off with 936 marbles in each of them. 
936. You know, we said we can't really, we don't know how many days we have, but 936 is the average number between birth and high school graduation. 936 marbles. And so we use these jars. <laughs> Each one of these is one of my children. Uh, we use these jars as a visual reminder of how many weeks we have left. We take a marble out every week. And that can seem kind of sad, like, man, they're going to you only know, have this much time left. They're going to leave unless you have teenagers. And it's like, sweet, they're going to leave. Um, I don't have teenagers. I'm just saying. That's what I've heard. Um, but but these, these, these jars, these marbles, so like the one on the bottom there is our youngest. That's Anna. We have 70, 700, 720 marbles in there, which means we have 720 weeks left before she graduates high school, give or take. Uh, this one here, this is Gideon, our middle child. Uh, there's 563 marbles in there, and Lydia, our oldest, just 459 weeks that we have to love her and to mold her and to teach her and to train her and to correct her and to create memories with her and, and all of those things that we do. Now, I understand, of course, you never stop being a parent. I get that, right? But, but something certainly changes when they go off to college. The time we have to do that is, is a little bit less. And so uh, these jars, although they could be a sad thing, they remind us of two very important truths. Number one, we don't have to do everything this week. I don't have to teach everything there is to be taught. I don't have to make her this, the, the perfect child that we and God would like her to be this week. I got some time. But it also reminds us, it's a very visual reminder that what we do this week matters. They're a reminder of how much time we have left. And when you see how much time you have left, what matters, uh, you tend to do more with what, with what time you have now. You tend to be more intentional about making history one week at a time. A bit more intentional about investing in the next generation of God's family. And, and so, so have a number. Create some way. Maybe use marbles. Maybe use Skittles or M&Ms or pebbles. I thought if you use something edible, they tend to go down a lot quicker. Um, but maybe, you, maybe you're not talking about your own kids and you're trying to just kind of guesstimate. There, you know, there's actually an app for that. It's called the Legacy Countdown, and you can put in your child's birth date, and, and it'll tell you you have this many weeks. It'll actually tell you weeks, months, days, seconds you have till graduation. And it's, it's just a practical thing to keep it in the forefront of our mind that our time is limited, so let's make the most of what we're doing now. Let's make the most of our time investing in the next generation. Just an idea. A another one is to build a routine. Build a routine in your family. Every week has the same amount of time, uh, but maybe every week has a different emphasis. You know, these last couple weeks in our family, it's been the beginning of summer, and my brother's opening up this cool sports complex, and so we've been crazy busy, and it's just been like relationship, like let's have fun together time. This coming week, we're going to spend a little more time, kind of a rehash of school. Let's learn something this week. Let's do some reading. Let's, let's do some responsibility stuff. But I would encourage you to look, pay attention. It's all about paying attention. Typically, we just go, and... Things just kind of happen. What if we're intentional about a routine in our lives where we watch the flow of our family and we find out what are the best places to, to go to church? What are the best times to, to insert break times and do activities and hang out together and, and have all these things and eat together and things like that? A routine, not only does it, is it helpful to kind of control some of the chaos, but it allows you to look ahead and plan times to invest. And I didn't make this up. This comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's one of my favorite, probably my favorite uh, passage when it comes to the next generation. Deuteronomy 6, Moses has just received the Ten Commandments and he shared them with the Israelites and he caused the entire, the entire nation of Israel, not just the parents, not just the grandparents or those who have kids, but everybody because biblically it takes a village, right? There's wisdom in that. And he calls everybody together and he says, hey, these commandments that I've given you today, they need to be on your hearts. Adults, you need to be growing in the faith. You need to be spending time with God. You need to hear what God says. You need to know His commandments. The very next words out of His mouth are, impress them on your children. Talk about them. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when, when, you, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. That's the rhythm of our lives, right? It's just while you're going about your day. Hey, when you're in the car talk about these things. When you're, when you're going on a walk together, when you're having a meal together, talk about things that matter. Talk about eternal things. 
when you wake up in the morning, you're having breakfast, or you're getting ready, you're doing your hair, or you're doing your makeup at the stoplight, stop for a moment and, and check in with the kids. When you're tucking them in at night, pray. Share a story from, I don't know, maybe the Bible, or something that teaches character, or something that's going to matter with some value, right? It's just part of, we, we do life this way. Why would, we, why would we impart spiritual truths and invest spiritually for eternal values any other way? how you go about your day create a routine and like Moses did I mean we'll talk about this later at another point but inv- invite other people in invite other adults to speak into your kids lives you don't have to be everything to your child you're not equipped to do that that's why we have the church it's God's design we can have other people speaking into their lives a third idea that might just help you be number your days and, and make the most of your time with your kids is, is to mark up your calendar what if, you, what if you went ahead and, and looked ahead and highlighted some of the most important things, significant things happening, whether it be birth dates or, or uh, beginning of school or end of school or things you're going to attend or vacation things? My sister, Tara, she watches our kids on, on Wednesday so that I can have a day at the office. And a couple months ago, she, she did this craft with our kids. And it was a countdown, a way to count down to our trip for Disney at the end of October. Now, it was so long ago that it takes up, you know, this craft takes up three doors in our home, uh, and every day we take off, uh, we take off one number until we're, we're counting down to our Disney trip, right? We're looking ahead, and there's 112 days till Disney. And it just sounds like, well, what's that do? That's a, so what? We have a calendar. I use my phone. Yeah, I get that. But just a little initiative can create some anticipation and, and can create, when we have these these important dates that we know of it creates a great collection of memories with our kids that, that help build and build and there's excitement and we can celebrate those things. It's all about relationship with your kids. One last thing. Would you protect your weekends? Would you guard your weekends? If you're taking notes, write this down. Weekends are for relationship. Weekends are for relationship. The truth is the number of weeks we have left is equal to the number of weekends. It's specific weekends that we can invest in the lives of, of, of our, the next generation. And so guard them, protect them, be strategic about them, prioritize them, be intentional about leveraging your weekends for creating history together. And that means you're going to have to say no to those things that you, you know they rob your time. And, and included in that, would you set aside Sundays with the Lord? Would you prioritize your relationship with God and, and training up your kids to know the Lord and the things He has done? Sunday is a great day to unfocus from the week before and get ready to refocus on what's most important for the week to come. And it's the great time to zero in on your relationship with God. Just four thoughts that might, that might help you make the most of your time because time matters not going to stop regardless of your priorities or your desire it's going to keep going and god says number your days we ask god hey help us to number our days we might gain a heart of wisdom time it's always an issue truth is it can be the greatest threat to your relationships it can be the greatest enemy to your living the way god desires it could be the greatest obstacle to your children knowing the lord and all he's done or time can be your friend the gift God intended it to be, the platform that we use to invest in the lives of those around us, telling the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, His power and the wonders He has done. One really cool author wrote this about time. He said, time is a resource that is non-renewable and non-transferable. You cannot store it, slow it up, hold it up, divide it up, or give it up. You can't hoard it up or save it for a rainy day. When it's lost, it's unrecoverable. When you kill time, remember... It has no resurrection. That's why Moses prayed, Lord, teach us to number our days. Friends, what you do in the life of a child this week matters with eternal significance. There is nothing too small because when you're consistently being present and doing small things, they amount to big things, right? And the fact is, and I've heard it said, we're simply one generation away from the church not existing happened in Judges. One generation died, the next generation grew up and had no idea who God was and no idea what he had done. So let's number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. When it comes to investing in the next generation of God's kingdom, 
and people in general. Let's play for keeps. This has been a presentation of the Lewis Church of Christ. We are located at 15183 Coastal Highway, Milton, Delaware, three miles north of Lewis on Highway 1. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday morning.